Inflation is trending in the past few months. The consumer price index just rose above 5% in the last month. The Federal Reserve announced that they get up their expectation for upcoming inflation. And it seems like everyone is talking about inflation from investors like Michael Burry to Buffett in the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting and much more. Whether inflation is coming and how strong is it coming is beyond the scope of this video. In this video, I will focus on what you can do against inflation, what historically is the best assets to hold to edge against inflation. But understanding how much inflation is coming and how strong is it coming is an important step that you should do for yourself because this will lead the decisions of how much you're going to hedge against inflation, how much of your portfolio you will put into uh, hedges against inflation and how much you will pay for it in uh, opportunity cost. Because if inflation isn't coming and you pull out of a very promising growth company, you will lose the potential um, returns there. So you need to understand what is the risk you want to take, what is the risk you want to hedge against, and by that decide what to do. In this video, I will show you what, based on history, is the best hedges against inflation in case you want to take those actions. What's up investors, Sneer is here. In this YouTube channel, I cover everything about intelligent investing. If you're interested in intelligent investing, please hit the subscribe and hit like of this video if you find the content valuable. And with that said, let's start. In the next few minutes, I will cover what are the best hedges against inflation for you as an individual investor, as well as why are those assets are the best hedges against inflation, because I believe by understanding the reasons of why they are the best hedges, you will be able to form a mental model that will help you to assess other assets against inflation. I will cover mostly historical data, but there is one prominent asset that doesn't have any historical data, at least not for inflation, that is Bitcoin. So stay until the end of this video to hear my opinion about Bitcoin as an edge against inflation. Guys, before we dive in, I want to mention that everything in this video is adapted from an article that I just wrote that is in my site and have all the uh, dynamic graphs and data that I will present here. So if you prefer to read and if you want to mess with the data yourself, you can find the link down below. So first thing to mention when we assess different investments against inflation is that we need to assess every asset at every point of time individually. Because things like saying uh, gold is a great hedge against inflation is factually true, but it might not be true for a specific point of time. Let's say that everyone already had this genius idea of going into gold and the media pumped it really strong recently. So the gold prices might be already too high to be a good hedge against inflation and it will be a bad investment regardless. Same goes for real estate. The real estate specifically in your country or your region might be in a bubble regardless of the current situation. So you need to assess every investment individually and not just looking at the statistics because the statistics hide behind them very big numbers. So you need to consider that. Let's start by looking at stocks. Stocks in general are much more volatile in an inflationary environment. I collected the data since 1928 of the inflation rate every year and the returns of the S&P 500 every year since, or the equivalent of the S&P 500, to see if there is any correlation. And what I find is pretty clear. So as you can see now on the screen, I collected the years that had inflation that is more than 3.5%. And you can see there are a lot of years with huge downturns in this inflationary environment. Compare that to an inflationary environment that is more stable, one to 2%. As you can see, most of the years had an upturn. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that stocks, every stock will lose in an inflationary environment, but it means that the stock market is much more volatile and you have more chances to lose money in the stock market when we have inflation. Now, the reasons that productive companies are losing value during an inflationary environment are varied, but let's cover three main ideas to just wrap our heads around it and understand how inflation can affect companies. 
And by understanding that, we will be able to understand maybe there are companies that aren't affected by that and are good investments. And maybe we will be able to get these ideas into other assets and understand why they are good against inflation. The first type of companies that lose in an inflationary environment are capital intensive operations. Let's understand it by covering the lemonade stand example. Let's say you have a lemonade stand and you buy in the first year lemons uh, in the worth of a thousand dollars. Let's say a thousand dollars buys you a uh, thousand lemons and you take these lemons and you create lemonade which you sell for a thousand and a hundred dollars. So you have 10% margin. Now let's say that in the next year now you have a thousand one hundred dollars you want to reinvest in your business so you want to buy a thousand and a hundred dollars worth of lemons but if there is inflation of ten percent effectively this uh eleven hundred dollars will buy you the same amount of lemons you bought a year before so inflation of ten percent ate exactly your margins of ten percent now, this is an obvious oversimplification, but it demonstrates how inflation eats up the revenues you bring into the company as it progresses. Uh, and it, of course, it depends in real life in a lot of other factors, in your pricing ability, how fast you can raise prices on your customers versus the uh, assets you need to buy to produce your, your uh, products. But regardless of all of that, the story remains the same and capital intensive companies tend to lose in an inflationary environment. Next is the phenomenon of delayed inflation. That means that you as a business have the pricing power to raise prices for your customers alongside the inflation, but usually can't do it immediately. Uh, you can do it for various reasons. Let's say you're a, a company that creates a furniture and you have a catalog agreement with prices for a whole year. And within that year, lumber prices uh, did more than three times their prices. So you need to pay more for lumber while your customers can pay uh, the same amount of money for your furniture because you published the catalog uh, for a year. Or another example is the uh, hairdresser example where people are so used to pay uh, some amount of money for an hairdresser that any uh, spike in the price seems extravagant to them. So they prefer to cut their hair at home or go to another hairdresser that didn't raise their prices. So these are three examples for why productive companies or stocks are losing money in an inflationary environment. Now let's go to the next type of asset. Let's cover uh, unproductive assets, which is gold and commodities. Any real asset that has limited supply and real world usage will rise up with inflation. Gold is well known to be a good inflation hedge. It has real world usage in the industry as well as the jewelry and it is in a limited supply naturally. I collected the data of gold prices alongside the inflation prices since 1973 which is the year that the gold standard went bust completely so it's the only year we can look at and have uh, meaningful results uh, to see how it affected by inflation uh, over time. Let's first look at the inflation phase in the 1980s. So as you can see now on the screen, the gold price went high alongside the inflation. And as soon as the inflation went down, uh, the gold price went down too. It means that timing with gold is very important because it will go very high alongside inflation. But once inflation is going down, the price will go down again. Now, they won't go all the way down because gold is uh, keeping its value over time, but it will go down enough that if you will stay with gold for the long term, you will lose money. And if you will stay with it for the very long term, it will only keep its value. So the real world uh, returns you will see with from gold after, after you uh, wipe out the inflation will be 0%. So it's a good hedge for a short period and to hedge for a very short time against rampant inflation, but it isn't a good asset to hold for a long time. A slightly different story uh, the past few months and they got 
really, really high, mostly because of uh, hurdles in shipping around the world and workers uh, delivering these uh, commodities. So if you look at something like uh, the lumber that got really, really high, you, as you can see right now on the screen, uh, it's not normal, but it is normal for lumber to go high with inflation. Uh, let's look at what happened to lumber in the 1980s. As we saw for the gold, you can see that in the 1980s it acted just like the gold. It went up in the beginning when uh, inflation were really high and then it went slightly down but keeping its value. Next, let's cover what is considered to be the best hedge against inflation, that is real estate and REITs. The reason that real estate is the best inflation hedge can be deducted from what we said before. So we talked about companies that have uh, a lot of uh, capital expenditure that make them lose money in an inflationary environment, but real estate doesn't have that much capital expenditure. Sure, you do need to do some maintenance and things like that, but uh, compared in percentage to the uh, money you get from real estate through rent, it's not that significant. So it works much better for real estate. The other side is that real estate is a real asset, real asset in the world that is limited in supply, just like gold and commodities. So it has the benefits of that gold and commodities have uh, alongside the benefits of being a productive asset through the rent. Now, real estate is the best inflation hedge over the long period, not necessarily in the short term, because if you look at it in the short term, commodities and gold rise up much faster than real estate and basically any other asset because of inflation. But as we saw through uh, gold in the 80s and lumber and any other commodity, after the huge rise, when inflation gets more stable or goes down, the commodities and the gold goes down fast. They keep their value, but they go down fast. So unless you think you can time the market perfectly through the gold and commodities uh, industries, um, the best investment for the long term will be real estate. There is a research paper from State Street that examined exactly that. And they showed right now, you can see it on the screen, that real estate through every step of inflation is more productive uh, and more stable. Uh, what you can see now on the screen is division by quintiles. So the first one is the uh, lowest inf inflation and the highest one is the highest inflation and how different assets um, are working compared to others. By the way, there is something better than real estate, farmland. It's better than real estate in every aspect that we mentioned before. It's more productive. It usually requires less capital expenditure compared to the assets it uh, produce. And it's in unlimited uh, supply naturally. Um, but as individual investors, we can't really buy a lot of farmland. Unlike people like Bill Gates that ran directly into that thing and bought and is now actually the biggest farmland owner in America. Of course, there are other options for inflation hedge that I didn't mention here because they are irrelevant for us as individual investors specifically in this time. Uh, one example is tips, which are bonds that follow inflation naturally and um, they just give you the coupon on the bond uh, plus the uh, inflation measured. So by definition, they give you more than the inflation, but currently the coupons they give you is 1%, which is useless for us as individual investors. And many other assets like that, uh, government bonds and things like that, are so low because of the low interest rate that are an unable to be an inflation edge at these times. Now to the promised thing about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is often compared to gold and commodities uh, because they say it's limited in supply, so and naturally by the technology, so it should act like gold as an edge against inflation. But the problem with that is that gold and other commodities have real world usage outside of their existence, whereas Bitcoin doesn't have any other real world usage other than its existence as uh, a transfer of uh, money or value. Um, 
So it acts more like real money, like dollars and things like that, than like commodities or gold. Um, so you can't really compare them and say that Bitcoin is a good edge. Bitcoin is more on the speculative side. Now, whether there is a reason for Bitcoin to really storm out the world, uh, it's beyond the comparison to gold and commodities. There might be another reason for Bitcoin to be a really good asset, but we can't really compare that to gold and commodities and we can't really um, act like Bitcoin is an edge against inflation. Uh, so when you buy Bitcoin, be aware that it's more of a speculative asset than a real investment. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this content and you found it helpful. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more content about intelligent investing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below to get more content from me. And uh, hit the like button if you like this video. It helps me a lot uh, with the algorithm. Uh, and with that said, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.